Good day to you all. My name is Eric. Today we'll be going through an advanced section of our course called Hedging. But before we begin, I would like to remind you that this lesson is intended solely for educational purposes only and is by no means a form of recommendation. With that, let's begin. What will we be covering today? Firstly, we will cover the main topic and understand exactly what is hedging. Next, we will explore the reason for hedging. We will also go through the process of hedging. And lastly, we will look into the things that we need to take note of when we are hedging. So what is hedging? Hedging is a type of strategy that is employed in the derivative market to reduce risk by making a transaction in one market to protect against a loss in another. Hence, the main reason for hedging are to reduce risk or loss and also to maintain existing positions while protecting against a general adverse market movement. How is hedging done? Let us go through a few simple examples to illustrate how it is done. Assume client has multiple long positions in SEI component stocks and an important economic report is due to be out in the US that night. Klein can either choose to hedge his position by shorting a few contracts of SDI CFD. In this situation, he has two options. The first is if the report is negative, the client then offset his loss in the long positions by the short position in the SDI. The other option is if the report is neutral or positive, the client can also close off the short position in the STI with minimum losses. In another example, let us assume a client has multiple short positions in shipping stocks and he notices the US or Euro futures are very positive. He foresees a mini rally but is still bearish over the midterm. Client can then choose to hedge his position by going long on a few contract of STI CFD. In this example, here are the options that he can take. If a rally materializes, he will have offset some of his losses in the short position. Alternatively, if there is no rally, he can close off his STI hedge with minimum losses. It sure sounds easy in this case, but what must we take note of when we are about to hedge our position? Hedging basically depends on the beta of the stocks in your current portfolio. Beta refers to the measurement of the movement of the price of a particular stock compared with the movement of the whole market over the same period of time. It is also important to know that hedging does not eliminate the risk or loss totally. Sometimes, depending on the number of contracts of the hedge, you may even get a small profit after offsetting the loss in your original position. Now, let us go through a few work examples to show how hedging works in different situations. First, let's look at Mr. John Tan. Mr. John Tan is long 10 lots of Yang Zijiang at $1.30. 10 lots of Costco at $1.20. He thinks there might be a short-term correction the next two days. And so he chooses to hedge his position with SDI CFD. Assuming Yang Zijiang and Costco both have a beta of about 2, Mr. Tan would need to hedge about 2 times the contract value of his total holdings. Hence, the total value of his holding would be $25,000. We find out the value to hedge by multiplying his total value with the beta, giving us $50,000. Given the current value of the STI is $3,000 now and the price per point being $5, the contract value of STI would be $15,000. Therefore, the total number of STI contracts to short would be the result of the division of the value to hedge with the contract value of STI which gives us 3 contracts. The next day, STI index declined 1% from 3000, giving us a total of 30 points. The gains from this would be 30 points 
multiplied by $5, multiplied by 3 contracts, giving us a total of $450. Moving back onto his other current positions, both Yang Zijiang and Costco each retreats about 2%, down 2.5 cents each to $1.27.5 and $1.17.5. Hence, the loss from the long position would be a total of $500. Now let us calculate the net loss as a result from the hedge in the STI index earlier. Due to the gain in the STI index, his net loss will only be $50. Comparing this to the $500 loss without the hedge, it is a difference of 90%. Now we also have to note that the degree of decline in STI and the stocks may not exactly be 1% and 2% and hence the result of hedging may vary. Let us now proceed to another example. In the first week of December 2011, Miss Mary Lee shorted 10 lots of Wilma at $5 and 10 lots of Sakari at $2. She thinks there might be a short-term rally the next two weeks, so she chooses to hedge her position with STI CFD. Assuming Wilma and Sakari both have a beta of about 0.5, Miss Lee will need to hedge about half the contract value of her total holdings. The total value of her holdings would be $70,000. Taking this and multiplying it with the beta would give us the value to hedge, which brings us to $35,000. Calculating the value of one STI point, we take the value of STI currently, which is at 2700, and multiply it by the value of each point, which is $5, giving us a total of $13,500. Dividing this with the value to hedge, we get approximately three STI contracts to long. After two weeks, STI did not rally, but instead declined from 2700 to 2650. Calculating the loss from going long, we get about $750. Wilma, however, remained unchanged at $5, while Sakari dropped from $2 to $190. We can calculate the gains from shorting 10 lots of Sakari, which will give us a total of $1,000. Now, when we calculate the net gain from this hedge, we get a total of $250. Comparing this with the $1,000 gain he should be getting, there is a difference of 75%. Hence, we see that hedging may not necessarily result in a reduction of loss. It may also cap potential profits. Let's move on to our very last example. On 10th February, 2012, Mr. Peter Tay went long on 5 lots of DBS at $13.60 and 5 lots of UOB at $17.60. He thinks that there might be a short term correction the next day, so he chooses to hedge his position with STI CFD. Assuming DBS and UOB both have a beta of about 1, Mr. Tay would need to hedge approximately the same contract value of his total holdings. Calculating his total value, we will get $156,000. Hence, the value to hedge would also be $156,000 since the contract value of one STI contract is $14,850 the number of STI contracts to short would approximately be about 10. The next day, STI opened lower than 2,970 but went higher. Mr. Tay closed the hedge at 2,975 and the loss from shorting is $250. Both DBS and UOB closed relatively unchanged the next day so Mr. Tay decides to keep his positions. Calculating the net loss, we get $250. Finally, we see that hedging provided 
the protection at a cost. If the SCI underwent a correction, this hedge would have been profitable to offset some of the losses from the bank shares. That brings us to the end of today's lesson. I hope you have learned a valuable lesson on hedging. Until next time, happy trading!